Well, hello, God's good people. Welcome back. So I am back to talk about Psalms 23. If y'all listen to Psalms 91, then I shared how the Lord had me um, studying Psalms 91 many years ago. And uh, even these years later, then Psalms 91 is, um, a, I call it the prayer of protection because that's what God told me to pray for protection against the plots of the enemy because the enemy was launching an attack against the family. And so I um, had started praying that and just never stopped uh, to this day. And I pray that I continue to do that faithfully. He also had me um, reading Psalms, Psalms 23 to our son Simeon in addition to Psalms 91 since before he was, you know, in my womb. And I had heard Joseph Prince one time many years ago say, if you have small children, read to them Psalms 23 every night. And so that's what I had begun doing. And to my surprise, Simeon grew up to a point where I think at about three or four, he was quoting Psalms 23. And it's so funny because the other day my mom asked him if he still recalled it because it had been a while since he quoted it for. And he was able to, which is so good um, that that word is in his heart, but he also knows what it means. You know, and that's so key and so important. So I want to share with you Psalms 23, just something that stood out as um, I read it and something that the Lord pointed out to me regarding David. Psalms 23, I have it from the NIV version here. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you're with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. We know he was on the run and that he lived in the caves. And he's saying, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. You know, and God also gave him the strength to not be afraid of the wild animals. I mean, he fought and killed a lion with his hand and took down Goliath. And he's on the run because Saul is trying to kill him because Saul's jealous because that spirit um, sent from the Lord, that evil spirit was sent out uh, tormenting Saul. And so um, and Saul's trying to protect his kingdom, <laughs> even though it's been ripped away from him already and David he knows is the next king and so David is saying I will fear no evil because you're with me this is how he handled the desert situation your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows you know what's interesting with that verse I said Lord I believe this is where David is talking about the time when Samuel came to anoint a king from Jesse's house. That was David's dad. And all his brothers passed before Samuel. And Samuel, in his mind, each time a brother passed in front of him, was like, oh, surely he must be king because he was looking at the outward appearance. And God finally said to Samuel, man looks at the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. And of course, we know that David is a man after God's own heart, according to scripture, right? And so story goes, um, Samuel's like, well, we can't sit down and eat first because he had prepared a table. And he did that in order, you know, obeying God because he did not want Saul to find out that he had went to go and anoint another king to take Saul's place like God instructed Samuel to do. And God and Saul, excuse me, Samuel had said to God, well, 
what I'm going to do. I just can't go and anoint a king and Saul's still alive. If he hears about it, he's going to have me killed. He's going to kill me. And so that's when God told him, okay, so I want you to go and take this and, you know, tell me you're going to make this sacrifice and have this feast or whatever. So Samuel goes and he pre prepares a table and um, a feast for Jesse and his sons. But after all the sons pass through, except Je uh, David, then Samuel says, well, we're not going to sit down and eat until, you know, I don't know. You got another son? Oh, yeah, yeah. They forgot about David out there in the field. Forget all about him. Oh, yeah. So David comes. And of course, we know the story that the oil began to flow. And it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. David's brothers, according to this, could have been his enemies. And of course, we know Saul um, didn't know him yet. So for him to say, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Only other persons that were around at that time, and y'all can give more insight. But it's interesting, were his brothers. And when he did go to fight Goliath, it's so interesting because they didn't want him asking questions. Oh, we know what you're trying to do, David. You know, if you go back and read it, uh, David's dad told him to go take some bread, check on your brother, see how they're doing. He goes to do that. He's like, hey, what's going on? He asking around and his brothers catch wind of it. What you doing? We know what you're up to. He's like, what? I didn't do anything. I'm just asking a question. Just want to know what's happening. Uh-huh. We know what you're doing. <laughs> they're not very kind to him. But because they forgot about him, or didn't want to mention him at all when Samuel came, it's interesting that David uses these words. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. That's exactly what happened. The cup did not flow. The oil did not flow when all his brothers passed before Samuel. But when he came, when they recalled, oh yeah, we've got him in the field. That cup overflowed and then they were able to sit down and eat because Samuel said, God has chosen you to be king, you know. And then David says, surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Look at what he says. I will dwell. We just talked about Psalms 91 and dwelling in the secret place, dwelling in the house of the Lord. Look at what he says. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So David is really teaching us some things here. And it's interesting because as I, um, you know, I also told y'all that I read a book of Proverbs each night uh, to Simeon as well, along with Psalms 23 and Psalms 91. Then we read a chapter um, of Proverbs for the day. And I had learned that from Mike Murdoch many, many years ago. And he was saying, there's a chapter for each day. And I hear p more people doing that too. Because, you know, once you do something, then you become more aware that everybody's doing it. Not that you started it, but you just become aware um, that everyone is, hey, you're doing it too, which is awesome. So he dwells in the house of the Lord forever. And then he tells us Psalms 91 of how he dwelt in the secret place, dwelt in the secret place and was safe. Um, so this is just interesting to read, to study the word. And this is how you stay encouraged. This is how you um, can see how David encouraged himself and the Lord when he went through some dark valleys. When it looks like, you know, most times that's when you should give up. He presses in and he goes in um, to worship and brings about God's presence. God shows up, changes the atmosphere. And we know he's a skilled musician as well. And um, of course, we know that when he would play for Saul, that that spirit would be driven out. So he knew how to worship and how to get God on the scene and drive out some stuff.
okay? So that's so key for us as well, to dwell in the secret place, to um, walk through the, even though we walk through a darkest valley, we won't fear evil, and that's because God is with us. His word is his rod, and his word comforts us. He's our peace. He's our strength and weakness. So be strengthened by the word of God. Meditate, study the word of God and let God speak to you and encourage you and um, take them at his word. Y'all be blessed, be encouraged, and I pray you're getting so much out of it. And if you are, uh, comment and encourage others too, or, you know, share with somebody else. Let's spread around what God is saying and what he's giving you to, you know, add to it, um, what God's giving you. And that's how we grow, iron sharpening iron. All right. Y'all be blessed. Love you much. Bye.